everyone, welcome back to Hero Training. We have had a big week. Well, Becca has. This has just been my week. Everything I've wanted to do has gone my way. I am unstoppable. You got the lead role in the upcoming play. You aced three tests at school. Every day has been a great hair day. Ooh. Hello? Oh. Of course I accept. Thank you. Just found out I was elected the School Honor Society's chairwoman. Ho oh, ho! I don't even know what that means, but it sounds important. I feel like I can do anything. Check this out. Whoa! <laughs> That's amazing! Ooh, the hero signal. You better answer our question this week. We'll have it answered in no time. Naturally. Don't worry, I got it. This week's letter is from Watson in Armonk. What? What? Where is that? No idea. He writes, Hi Josh and Becca, you talk about a lot of big problems on your show, but I don't really have any big problems. My life is great, so do I need to do stuff like following Jesus, or should I just wait until something bad happens? Mm, that's a good question, Watson. What do you think, Becca? I think when things are going well, you can just ride that wave. Eventually, perfection just becomes a part of who you are. Hmm. I think we should find out what the Bible says about that. We're gonna do some research and we'll be right back. Yes, we will. Woo! It's been a perfect week. So many great things have happened, so, uh, how do I feel so normal? Maybe I just need to do more. Yeah, more, more war, it's more, more wave. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so if I leave choir a half hour early, then I can make it to dance practice, and I can practice the routine in the evening after student council, then I bet I can get the dance solo, then I'll sign up for more volunteer hours. We're back! To find out what the Bible says about the big question we heard earlier. Yeah, yeah, that'll be perfect! Let's go! <laughs> Paul had traveled all over telling people about Jesus, and it was going pretty well until he returned to the city of Jerusalem. Yeah, not everyone wanted to hear about Jesus. Some people tried to stop me, no matter what it took. They captured Paul and made him a prisoner. Then they brought him before the king. Phew, Paul, oh, you've got quite the list. They tell me you believe some guy named Jesus died and came back to life. Let's start there. Well, I didn't always believe that. In fact, I used to think that I could do everything myself. Uh, I tried to follow every law exactly, and I hated anyone who wasn't like me. I used to track down people who followed Jesus and get them thrown in prison. Well, that's not what I expected. What happened? One day, I met Jesus himself. No. Yes. <gasps> I was traveling along the road when suddenly I saw a bright light and then I heard Jesus speaking to me. He said that God wanted me to tell everyone about Jesus, to get them to turn away from doing what's wrong and start doing what's right. So you're trying to get people to be good to each other. Yeah, but it's about more than that, King. You see, we have this collection of books called the Bible and in these books, it said that Jesus would come and then he would die and then he would come back to life. You can see for yourself, it's all true. Oh, I suppose. Jesus really did come and then die and, and come back to life. It made me realize that my life is about more than trying to be perfect and more than the things that I have. It's about more than just being successful. It's about following Jesus. So, how about it? How about what? Are you ready to follow Jesus? Hold up. I'm a king. I'm rich, I'm powerful. I mean, what else do I need? You are a prisoner. And you want me to follow the guy you're following? Oh, I don't want to end up like you. Well, I mean, I think everyone should be more like me. The following Jesus bit, not the prisoner bit. 
Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. That's it? Well, what happened? Did the king decide to follow Jesus? The story actually doesn't say. King Agrippa is a great example of someone who had everything, though. He lived in palaces, he traveled the world, and basically everyone had to do what he said. He was smart and popular and had everything. And Paul was just a prisoner. Why was he okay with that? I guess because Paul wanted to choose to follow Jesus even more than being a king. Hmm. But I'm not like the king. I mean, I've decided to follow Jesus a long time ago. Now I just have to work hard and make sure my life goes perfectly. <gasps> that reminds me, I still need to put together my posters. I'm running for class president. Hmm. I think Becca's getting a little carried away with this being perfect thing. We'll find out what happens in a minute. Hey, Bex. How's it going? Just perfect. Great. Yes, actually, I wanted to talk to you about this. Isn't it great? Uh-huh. But I was wondering, why are you doing all this? It's just a part of who I am now. Doing everything and crushing it! Yeah, uh, what if something doesn't go so perfectly? Shh, we don't speak of that. My perfect record never has to end. Every perfect record ends, Bex. And I'm worried that if you think everything has to go perfectly, what are you going to do when something goes <gasps> wrong? I'd be devastated. No more perfection charts, no more anything. But we don't have to worry about that until it happens, right? Actually, I think now is the perfect time to worry about that. Uh, come here. Hey, my chart. Imagine we are out on a wilderness adventure. OK, great. We've got everything we need, water, food, backpacks, our goal is to get to the campsite. But first, I have one question. What's that? Do we really need this map? What? Well, here's directions on it, but I think I've got a pretty good sense of direction. Uh, I think we should use the map. Well, we're on the right trail so far. We're doing perfect. Uh, shouldn't we just wait until we're lost to use the map? But we don't want to get lost at all. I think we need to follow the directions on the map the whole time, not just some of the time. And that's my point. You don't wait till you're lost to follow a map. Well, at least you shouldn't. In that example, I was trusting myself more than I was trusting the map, which probably would not have gone well. I know how easily you get lost. It probably wouldn't end well. I don't get what that has to do with me, though. Remember our Bible story? I think Paul was doing the same thing that you're doing. Paul tried out for a dance solo? <laughs> no. Uh, Paul was trying to be perfect, and then he met Jesus and realized he didn't have to be. Following Jesus didn't make him try harder to be the best, it just made him try harder to be like Jesus. Wow. You know, I might have gotten a little carried away. A little bit? <laughs> I was just so excited to get more awards and do more cool things that I forgot about the things I already get to do. And I kind of forgot about spending time with Jesus. Mm, yeah. I think we all need Jesus to lead us in every part of life, whether things are going great or they're difficult. In fact, I found a verse that Paul wrote that says something amazing about that. I know what it's like not to have what I need. I also know what it's like to have more than I need. I've learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. I am content whether I'm well fed or hungry. I'm content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. So whether life feels great or awful, I need Jesus the whole time? Yeah. Ooh, that's the answer to Watson's question too. Oh yeah, he was asking about whether it's important to follow Jesus when our lives are going great. And I think we can say that it is. Uh, definitely. Here's what I want to remember from today. I can follow Jesus, the greatest hero of all. Jesus really is a great hero. He will always be with us and lead us and help us every day of our lives. All we have to do is choose to follow him. And even if you're like me and you chose to follow Jesus a long time ago, we sometimes still need that reminder that we really do need Jesus. Not just sometimes, but all the time. You know, I think I'm done tracking my perfect record. Yeah. First step, I'm going to erase the perfection chart. Ooh.
Sounds perfect. <laughs> we'll be right back in a few minutes to continue our hero training with a fun game. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for Super Powered Face Off! In this game, we're going to draw a character and a superpower to create a brand new superhero. Then those new superheroes will face off to find who is more perfect. Oh, great superpowered soiree, Becca. What? All right, here we go. We have our bowls of characters and our bowl of superpowers. All right, start us off. My character is a time traveler. Hmm. And his superpower is beach ball creation. Nice. <laughs> okay. Beach balls all through time. My character is pirate. <laughs> How appropriate. One I know well. Mm -hmm, from the musical. And the power is a pig sidekick. What? A pirate with a pig sidekick? Okay. A pig sidekick. I'm so Ready? excited. Oh. <laughs> Arr! I'm Time Traveler Tim, and I summon Beach Balls! Whoa. Well, I'm Pirate Pansy, and this is Fluffy! He bites! <laughs> Pansy, get the ball! Ah! No! <laughs> <laughs> I think time traveling is a really cool trait that I have. That's true. I'm just a pirate, so I could probably sail boats. Yep, and you've got a, you've got a pig. This is really my main feature. What does the what does the pig do? Fluffy. Well, can bat away beach balls. We learned. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these heroes is um is more perfect? Well, you didn't really show off your time traveling ability. I mean, I really can't because I don't know how to time travel. <laughs> Fluffy says he is perfect. Therefore, the pirate is more perfect. All right, you're right. Perfect pirate <laughs> pansy oh. into a pig. <laughs> Another round. Another round. This time, I am musical theater star. Oh, perfect. So me. <laughs> <laughs> and my power is, can be understood in any language. Oh, that's okay. a good pair. <laughs> okay. I am hat man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Power. Hat man. Speaks to trees. Excellent. Both <laughs> of us are very good at languages. Yes. <laughs> oh. Hiya. I'm a hat maker. Hello, hat man. Like a haberdasher, but lots of hats. I can talk to trees. I can talk to trees, that's right. I am filled with star power, as you can see. So much star power that I can multiply my stars oh. while singing, because that's what I do. Oh, okay. Can you sing in all languages? Because that would be helpful. Oh, of course I can. <laughs> all right, musical theater star, which one of these superheroes is better? Talking to trees could be useful. Could be. You could find out, you know, what kind of hats people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Or I was thinking, ask for more like maple syrup. Um, but, you know, being a musical theater star, you can... Inspire. Inspire. People all around the world. Mm -hmm. Through different languages. Star power. Can you actually sing in different languages as a superhero? Because that's Sin. really the key. I could speak in every language. Don't know if I can understand every language, though. Can Hatman borrow hats? Because that could be useful. That could be useful. You're at the beach, mm -hmm. it's a sunny day. I'm like, yep. man, I wish I brought a hat. Oh my gosh, I have a hat for you. <gasps> Wonderful. And then I'm covered. Perfect. I like that. I think I win. Hats aplenty. Oh. <laughs> OK. Another one. A mime. Oh man, what an advantage. <laughs> okay, what's this mime's power? Mime power. A detachable hand. <laughs> Very helpful for a mime, I can imagine. <laughs> Too excited. Let me draw mine first before okay. you go running all off. Right, all right. Okay. <laughs> I am a person who is quickly growing older. It doesn't seem very. <laughs> I don't know if that's advantageous. And I can mind control 
Beavers. <laughs> okay. Let's go. All right, let's do. <laughs> Are you trapped? Trap him, Beaver. Oh, oh no, the hand. It's holding back Beaver. Oh, my back. <laughs> And a little hard to. Oh, you got through the wall. Okay, so you can't talk, which kind of puts you at a disadvantage. But I'd be getting old so quickly; it's a big disadvantage. And you do have a detachable hand. There it goes. I can mind control beavers, which I mean, beavers build things. What do you think? You know, it's a really good question. Oh. <laughs> because I don't find that a detachable hand would actually be very useful as a mime. Oh, really? Yes, I need to be able to, you know, do the things. In the meantime, I've gotten even older since this discussion. <laughs> yes, and it looks like your beaver's aging with you. No! <laughs> Clemmy! Oh, oh. You decide I need to nap. She's taking a nap. That's what happens when you get older. I think I win. What do you think? Here, yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> that was an adventure. You know, I don't think I would want to have any of those superpowers. Um, they definitely make life more interesting or complicated. <laughs> I know, though, whether I have superpowers or life is tough or things are going perfect, I still need Jesus to lead me. Mm, definitely. And if you decided to follow Jesus today, then we want to say again, congratulations. Or if you made that decision a while ago or still have questions, keep on learning about God. We can get to know him better every day. We'll see you next week to continue more of our hero training. So if we had superpowers, what would they be? Uh, I would probably want the ability to summon any musical instrument and learn how to play it immediately. Well, but what about you? Speedy math. Oh yeah, that makes sense.